The spring of 1979 was a very interesting moment in my life. I was still at Amherst College and there was a cross burning that happened. I've gone into detail about that cross burning in my place Big Chic, so suffice to say it wasn't a pleasant experience. In the middle of all that cross burning craziness at Amherst, Felix Romero telephones from New York and shows me a way out of my dilemma. Call Channel 3 right away in Hartford, ask for the news director, and set up an interview for this reported internship program they have. I go to that interview in a collarless shirt, dress slacks, and sandals. Ever the rebel, I got tight with reporter Chuck Curry during the Amherst takeovers and help him break the story who actually burned the cross. He greets me in the newsroom and takes me right away to Topping. This is the Puerto Rican brother I was telling you about who helped me on the cross burning report. Jim stands up and sticks out his hand. We were the first with that on the air. Come on in. Topping likes my attitude and hires me. A month after leaving Amherst, I'm at WFSB TV. It's a party in that newsroom, and I want a party after Amherst. Don't get me wrong, there are some heavy hitters at Channel 3. Jerry Tony is an investigative reporter who knows the streets and local government better than anyone I've ever seen on air ever. He schools me well. Randall Pinkston rocks as a reporter and anchor, a Mississippi native son who's destined to be an outstanding CBS network news presence. Jim Topping is a Texan force in the industry responsible for switching from film stock to video covering news and had the charm of a Kennedy mixed with rather. Pam Cross is into righteous reporting. Her focus is something else. She probes into Ted Kennedy's role in maneuvering to weaken the exclusionary evidence rule, which stops many intrusive police searches. Few people hear about this, but this sister is on it like white on rice. Jeffrey Lyons not only does movie reviews in English, but Spanish as well. Hartford is more than 50% Puerto Rican with an average age of the community at 19. Something, huh? I'm in the right place at the right time. A whole city is finding itself as I'm coming into my own. People really don't know how wild some reporters, anchors, cameramen, and techies are. I don't care what movies have shown. It's not the whole truth. Network is the front lines of ludicrousness. But in Hartford, they're local stars. Everyone knows them. It can be tiring, so behind closed doors, anything goes. I pick up on that hanging out with the crew after my interview and put it to the test my first day on the job. I get a desk next to Chuck Curry and roll a fatty right there on my desk calendar the size of my index finger. This is for after work tonight. Chuck sits there laughing. Damn, brother, you are bold. You're going to fit right in. Chuck is the first reporter I know of who comes back from Atlanta after the child murders and tells me that someone else besides Wayne Williams off the Little Boys. Right before the Cuban-American cops rioted in Liberty City, Florida. Yeah, man. They keep on finding mutilated kids after Williams got picked up. That's Klan bullshit to let black folk know. They may get higher positions in the city government, but the Klan is still around. Pretty soon I'm covering City Hall and Board of Education stories and copping smoke and hash right in the newsroom from some of the secretaries and cameramen. A lot of people smoke in Harvard and some people who don't should have. Like some of the cops who are always on the edge. Jerry Tony brings me along to hang out with Hartford cops at the local VFW club. Policemen are a funny breed. They have to deal daily with every type of biscuit head there is. Sometimes they're just as big a biscuit head as the ones they're dealing with. They drink a lot loaded with artillery behind closed doors at the VFW. Jerry is a dangerous prankster. He pulls out a tiny cap gun one night and fires it by the pool table. I never see so many pieces get drawn and cocked. It's like a thunderclap followed by complete silence. Rough night, fellas. Stop fucking around, Tony. All right, relax. A beer for everybody and just as quickly the guns are gone and they're drinking. It's the first time I witnessed that much firepower drama. Later, I learned they're seriously outgunned on Hartford streets. I'm assigned this German cameraman named Heinz who is a trip. I never know what he's going to do or say. 
Und during the war, I was in the Hitler Youth. My father was an SS colonel caught after the Stuttgart committed suicide. I was relieved. He was a pain in the ass. Who, your father or Hitler? Total silence broken by his chomping on a sausage-filled Kaiser roll. Und? When we get the story, we wrap it up quick. Max schnell, eh? Heinz rarely catches more than 15 seconds a shot, so he isn't kidding about a quick shoot. We roll up on this police raid in New Britain and jump out. Pretty soon there's shots fired and I find myself being pulled by Heinz towards the shooting. Come see here. Und carry that recorder quickly. Rapidly, rapidly we might see some blood. We end getting squat, but in the car ride back I realize, Heinz, we could have been shot. Und nonsense. We could have won an award. Und it was so much easier during the war.